Hello and welcome to Members on the Mic with the Troy Chamber of Commerce, where we connect with Troy Chamber members as they give us a glimpse into their company and share some of the business lessons they've learned along the way. Hi everyone, I'm Tara thompson Cusack, President and CEO of the Troy Chamber of Commerce, and I'm joined today by our lovely co-host and Vice President of the Chamber, Sheila Denstead. Good morning, everyone, or should I say afternoon, or should I keep you want, waiting and wanting to know what time this will be airing? I guess mm. it could be any time that they choose, so that's a good point. So first, I'd like to take a moment to thank our presenting sponsor, Tryon Solutions. Stay tuned for our very first commercial break, where you can learn how you can rely on Tryon. So Sheila, we've got a great guest ahead today. So why don't you do the introductions? <laughs> well, I'd love to. Um, we have a newer Michigander, I should say. Today we are meeting with Archie Drake since December of 2022. Archie has served as the Chief Executive Officer of Children's Hospital of Michigan, one of six hospitals that make up the Detroit Medical Center, which is part of Tenant Healthcare that operates 80 plus hospitals across the country. Archie has served in healthcare industry throughout his career with experience in multiple hospitals across the country. His medical background started in nursing. Where he worked as a critical care trauma registered nurse. After moving into leadership roles, he gained experience at all levels of management from manager, director, chief operating <laughs> officer, and now chief executive officer. Isn't it fun hearing your own bio? It is. <laughs> <laughs> well, wait, there's more. There's more. <laughs> he has history of being active in local civic and national organizations. Since relocating to Michigan, he has affiliations with the MHA Children's Health and Hospital Council, CMU Clinical Research Institute Advisory Board, Heroes Circle Kids Kicking Cancer Board, Sparky Anderson's Catch Charity for Children's Board, <laughs> and he's been appointed on con commissioned by Governor Whitmer. Oh, my God. When do you have time to, to work? I find it from time to time. Yeah. Right. Not, he's not busy at all. Yeah. Oh, here's the fun part. Archie was born in Texarkana, Texas, and obtained his undergrad nursing degree from the University of Texas at Arlington and graduate degree in business from Amherton University. Welcome. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thanks, Archie, for joining us. I guess to get things started mm -hmm. off, Children's Hospital of Michigan has over 2,500 employees. How do you find it as a leader best to connect with them and kind of share your wisdom and help guide the future? Sure. So I'm sure as all leaders, we know our people are our most important asset. So you have to spend time on your most important assets. But how do I do it? So first of all, it's my calendar. My calendar is a mess, <laughs> just for the record. But we understand I have a, I have a that. Great assistant. Shout out to Brenda Bird. Woohoo! Have to do that. So Brenda on my calendar every single week. She she blocks out two hours in one hour increments, and that's my rounding time. And Brenda has me slayed to go every department in the hospital over the course of a year. I go multiple times. It's kind of randomly random. I never know where <laughs> I'm going. So yesterday, for example, I went to the pediatric ICU. And during that time, a whole hour, I walk through the unit, sit down with the staff. Um, I visit patients and their families um, just to say hello, visit with the medical staff that are rounding. I may jump into rounds for a few minutes to hear what's going on. It's about being present. It's truly saying I'm here to listen. They're not rushed, so I can really take my time and hear the staff. Secondly, we do a town hall every single month. And oh, I will wow. share with you all, this is a secret, I'm probably the strongest introvert you've ever met. <laughs> So to take the time one hour every month just to open the floor to my staff, to my hospitals, my clinics, to just let's get and talk about topics. I kick it off, talk about some important things on my mind, but save half the meeting for them to fire questions at me. And I always tell them nothing's off limits. It's about truly connecting with the staff. Well, and I think what's great, too, is when we look at it, you can't sit in an office and know what's going on in no, a hospital. Absolutely not. So when you're spending that time engaging, and I, I like the random randomness because mm -hmm. you're going to see a little glimpse of your hospital every day and know what's really going on because you can see what's going on in your employees' eyes. You can see their passion. You can see their drive. And being a part of that, I think, helps must help drive you a bit. It does. It drives me and it also keeps my staff on their toes. They <laughs> never know when I'm coming. So it's not like they can say in the ICU, he comes the second Thursday of every month. Oh. They never know when I'm going to show up. So that also makes it unique. It makes it real because yeah. they don't prepare for it. Yeah. It's a positive, it's a positive showing. Saying exactly. Hello. <laughs> well, does that go with both hospitals then? How do you do both having the one downtown and the one in Troy? So a couple things I do. So first of all, downtown is where I'm, I'm housed, if you would. Mm -hmm. I'm in Troy one day a month at least. 
and I work out of the Troy office. I got an office up in Troy on third floor. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I'm there. But also I will once a month, well, every third Thursday, I rotate to the outlying locations throughout Southeast Michigan. So I'm, I'm very well known. And any and I love to celebrate. <laughs> I love to celebrate. So we do this thing every Wednesday called um, kind of we have kudos to our staff. And the executive team gives kudos. And for the real special kudos, I'll drive to Southfield. I'll drive to Troy just to recognize the staff that were there. And again, they'd never see it coming. So mm-hmm. it's very genuine. Oh, my God. That's so much fun. Mm-hmm. Um, can you share with our listeners what you think the key components are to building and maintaining uh, good relationships um, constructive criticism plays a role, I'm sure. How you mm-hmm. handle that, how you go about giving constructive criticism, I think that'd be important for our listeners to yeah. learn. So the key to, I'll give you two words. Um, it's being trustworthy and being a person of integrity. I think those are the two things that people will re- to relate to. You mentioned my, my background. I've spent a third of my career at the bedside. I last took care of a patient in January of 2013. Not that long ago. Yeah. So I still think I can do it, but I probably can't. In, in all <laughs> you fairness. have it in your heart. That's exactly mm-hmm. right. And it's about follow-up. It really is. So when staff ask a question, even if the housekeeper, the plan ops um, tech, they have a question, my goal is to follow up on that question myself. I, I delegate a lot of work, but I don't delegate follow-up. I do it, I do it myself. Um, and there are times to be constructive um, in the feedback I give people. Um, it's about saying no. I mean, sometimes the answer is no. Mm-hmm. But, you know, people respect you when you come back with the answer no, opposed to dodging them, never giving follow-up. It's no. Sometimes it's hard no. What I really thrive for is a no but. No, we can't do that, but. And also, when things don't look quite right to me when I'm out and about, my favorite phrase is, now help me understand. <laughs> Yeah. When that comes out of my mouth, they know, okay, what is he going to say? But that's a way to phrase it in a way that's not threatening. You know, it's easy to to really hear it from that perspective. Then stop doing that. Well, help me understand why why this would be like that. Well, and sometimes that's going to open up the feedback that you may not have known why. That's exactly. a better option. The no may be there, but that feedback can actually change the opinion because you're open-minded enough to accept the feedback. That's exactly right. And there have been times where I've said no, but, but then there's more information. I changed my mind. Mm-hmm. So I do reserve the right to change my mind at any time. Yes, yeah. as, as everyone answers. should. <laughs> Well, it's funny you say, because when you think about it as a kid, we're told, no, we don't get that explanation. And sometimes we sit there and we fester on it. When you have the explanation and can understand why, then you too, if it is a no, maybe you're trying to find that other direction to make it a yes. That's exactly right. Yeah. That's exactly right. Well, guys, I think this is a great moment to take a quick break and hear a word from our presenting sponsor, Tryon Solutions. We'll be right back. I'm Joe Vacari, President and CEO of the Joe Vacari Restaurant Group, which encompasses 24 restaurants throughout the country. Tryon's able to provide for our employees health insurance, 401ks, vacation time. All of that helps us compete against larger companies for top talent. Happy employees make for great service, and that's what our restaurants are known for. That's why we rely on Tryon. You can always rely on Tryon. Welcome back. We are here with Archie Drake, CEO of Children's Hospital of Michigan. So Archie, one thing that Children's Hospital I think is known is creating amazing, powerful community partnerships. Why is this important to Children's Hospital of Michigan and what impact does that make? Sure. So the reason it's important is I believe that we're all better together. Mm-hmm. You know, if we look at, you know, think of the chamber, for example, you know, if the community's healthy, then by the people in the community, if they're healthy, they thrive. When the community thrives, businesses thrive and becomes a circular feedback, Mm -hmm. kind of a paddle wheel continuing to go in a flywheel kind of phenomenon there. So we're all better together. And and partnering with our community community, um, peers is just so important to me, important to the Children's Hospital of Michigan as well, particularly because we take care of children and they are our future. So one day when I retire, I hope there's a kid today who's going to be ready to take my job one day and, and be the job, continue to lead the great organization that we serve. Well, it's interesting, too, because I think Troy has a pride about that Children's Hospital is in Troy. So obviously you have your location in Detroit, but there's there's never a person that you say, oh, yes, we also have Children's Hospital. Like, it's brought up. So we get to go to meetings. They're like, oh, yeah, Troy has everything. We've got great businesses. We have Children's Hospital of Michigan. And the inflection of joy that comes out of their voice is because you guys have made it a very apparent to be a partner. 
Absolutely. Not to just be a building and not to just provide service and care, but to be a partner with our community. And I think that's something we all respect. And let me add to that, too. You know, the, the other reason we went to Troy, it, it was not by coincidence. So if we look at patients from Oakland County, from Troy, have always sought services with the Children's Hospital of Michigan. Mm-hmm. And our strategy is to take care of people closer to home. You know, clearly, meet people where they are. clearly there are some complex diagnoses and procedures that have to come downtown to Detroit. But if as much as we can do in the Troy community, and even if we have to come downtown, let's do the pre-work and the post-work mm-hmm. in their community and make it episodic going to Detroit because I will stay close to home. Yeah. So that's important to us. Well, and you're, you're meeting people where they are. And Absolutely. I think that main aspect, too, is health care is scary. It is you're you're going to have, and you're dealing with children. It's a whole different level of fear. So you're actually, we're not in a very long 45 minute car drive. We can take that five minute drive and just stop by and see the doc. And Absolutely. It, it does kind of make it a more welcoming environment. And let's be honest, you're building is the most yeah. colorful thing. It's a Lego. It's it a giant a Lego. Lego and it's amazing, yeah, it but it, it just brings joy to our community. Uh, absolutely. You know, it is scary. You know, we're in a business where no one comes to us because they're having a good time. Yeah. yeah. And, and so the less stress. They had can, a good time, yeah. maybe. They had a good time, yeah. maybe. But no, but anything we can do to make that, you know, less stress for the kiddo, for the parents, it, it means everything to us. I love it. So, Archie, you hit on something a little bit earlier, you know, being the CEO of Children's, you're dealing with a lot of different employees. You have nurses, you have world-class surgeons, business administration, janitorial staff. How do you or do you adapt your communications when you're talking to each each segment of your employees um, so that what your communication, your leadership style? Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Sure. Well, the easiest way to do it is tell the same story. <laughs> That's the easiest thing. The message is the same. Um, the the model's the same. The priorities are the same. But maybe, so what is going to be the same? The how is where it may deviate. So, for example, if I'm talking to the chief of staff mm-hmm. and I'm talking about something healthcare related with the hospital, I may say it one way. But if I'm talking to a frontline housekeeper who let me tell you, of all the services we have, if housekeeping poof disappeared, oh, mm-hmm. it's a whole different we'd world. miss it. So mm-hmm. if I'm talking about so our central line infection prevention, I'm talking to a physician, I'm talking about things like um, your technique of inserting, and are we using, do we need to get a different type of catheter to insert? With the housekeeper I'm talking about, when that patient leaves, the way you clean that room is so important to preventing infection. Mm-hmm. So maybe preventing infection is the topic, but I'm going to, how I say it is would vary, but the message, the key is keep it the same. What I appreciate um, is the fact that, A, I'm the daughter of a housekeeper. So my mother was a housekeeper for 27 years. Mm-hmm. And it's one of those things of like, yes, you're going to talk to a physician and say, hey, here's this. And I'm going to talk in a very critical, these are the, this is the exact verbiage I need. But the housekeepers play such an important role. And the respect given across the board is so important. So thank you for that. It is. Now, fun fact. If you look at any hospital, if you look at, and you put a clock, a timer by job specialty, no doubt nurses spend the most face time with mm-hmm. patients. No, number two, it's not the doctor, it's the housekeeper. You think about it, they come in, they clean the room a couple times a day, they empty the trash. They have just, they have just second only to nursing the amount of face time that they have with our Incredible. patients. So and, the, and the opportunity that they get to spread joy to these people as well Absolutely. is a huge thing because I'm, I'm a big fan of understanding all of our staffs. Yes, our communication styles may change, but everyone plays a very important role. That's exactly right. So I guess um, for my question is you brought up that you hope one day that one of these kids is going to take your job. Mm-hmm. Uh, what advice would you give to someone looking to go into healthcare? Well, I was at kid or once. housekeeping. Well, <laughs> yeah, I, w- I was at kid once, and and you're exactly right when you say healthcare. Um, it's not necessarily medical care; it's healthcare. Mm-hmm. The first thing, declare it. You got to declare it. You got to say this is what I want to do. If you know this is what you want to do, then there's job fairs everywhere. So, Children's Hospital of Michigan, um, the Detroit Medical Center, we host health fairs throughout the community. That's a time to come and really look at specific jobs at that time. So, if you know, declare it. Number two, if you don't know, explore it. Mm-hmm. There are things in healthcare besides blood and guts and <laughs> taking care of patients. Fun stuff. Um, you know, there, there are, so for and even none, 
I'll say some of the trades as well. So, for example, hospitals have the most complicated HVAC systems. So if you are in some type of um, shop study at, at school, there's work for you in healthcare. It's very regulated that way as well. Um, secondly, you know, you always go to a website. Um, every hospital, including ours, we mm-hmm. have a careers page. Take a look at what's out there, and you'll be surprised the none, and they're in categories. Yeah. You may see allied health. You may see facilities. There's things in it as well. Look at the job description. See, see what is required for those jobs and take advantage of it. And lastly, you know, I always say this, and Brenda gets very mad at me, call me. So on the Detroit Medical Center webpage, there is a contact the CEO. Well, you, you go out there, you pull down the hospital, you ask anything. I recently spoke with a young lady who was at Michigan State. I'm not being funny, Ooh, I promise. Go green. Yeah, it's all right. I'm okay. not being funny. <laughs> and um, so she was, she was at Michigan State doing undergrad. She knew she wanted to go into medicine, but not sure which one. She was thinking anesthesia. So she went the contact the CEO, chose children's, and I got the email. Well, Brenda got the email. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but, you, but you do your follow-up is what I we learn. Yeah. I do. So I had a 30-minute call with her, and we and it ended up we ended up having her shadow a day with our anesthesiologist and just spend a day with them in the OR. There's a process for doing that. Summer's coming up, particularly young people. Come shadow. Yeah. Come take a look. Give me a call. We'll talk about it. Well, and I think any of these jobs are creating an impact. So just because maybe you don't want to go to medical school or you don't want to go to nursing mm-hmm. school, you can be an HR. You can. And then mm-hmm. help hire the next future doctors. That's like there's exactly there's so right. many great so many ways to, to be a part of a hospital system and Children's of Hospital of Michigan is obviously doing a great job. So <laughs> thank you for that. Well, Archie, what do you want to leave our listeners with today? What nugget of information? So the nugget I will say is, I'm going to go back to partnership. Um, I want everyone to understand that the reason we're here is partnering with the community. And I'm looking for ways to partner. So most recently, I'll give you a couple examples um, from a, you know, there's three things we can offer. Um, Resources, um, health and wellness sponsorships are important to me. Anything we can do to sponsor my perspective, let me know. Um, There's a budgeting process for that we do every year. So I may not be able to say yes right now, but let's plan for it. Um, secondly, it's, our, it's, it's time. Um, I want to offer my time. My team offers their time. Um, just last month, we were out at one of the elementary schools reading to second graders. The funny uh-huh. part about that is they chose the book. So I'm like, okay, <laughs> what book is next? And they gave me a book to read their favorite book. Some of those words, I mean, these are second grade books. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that was a challenge for me. But then it's also is how do we provide access? So recently I was talking to Boys and Girls Club. They have big kid football right now. And football, I love football. I have a son who's a college athlete. and um, But we're going to volunteer some time with our sports medicine program folks, just be on the sideline, just to be there, to be a resource, to help out. So I want to leave with we're here to partner with the community. Um, I want to shout out to the Troy Chamber for the great work that you do because we're all better together. Absolutely. Absolutely. I agree 100% on partnership. So, guys, that's all we have here today on Members on the Mic with the Troy Chamber of Commerce. To learn more about upcoming events and how to join the Troy Chamber, go to troychamber.com. Thanks, everyone, and have a great rest of your day. Bye bye. Bye bye. 